Well, Congressman Walsh, great to have you on the show, sir. Thanks for uh, joining us tonight. I always love being with you. Thanks. Uh, let me ask you about the uh, the vote today in the uh, House on the uh, National Right to Carry Reciprocity Act. I mean, this sounds like, uh, despite the attempts from opponents of the Second Amendment, uh, this passed handily. It passed handily, and again, I think it's an important uh, really, at this time, a real important statement going on with this issue. I actually think this issue, the Second Amendment and gun rights, is a is a growing, pressing issue in this country. And it, it made me feel good uh, to see the House do what we did. Um, and you know what? I'm, I'm hoping that the Senate will take it up. You know, I know we've got a lot of listeners from uh, Illinois who are uh, fighting for the right yeah. to carry in your state. And, and it's, uh, I mean, that, that's that's one of the ironic things, I guess, about this legislation is that, unfortunately, because Illinois doesn't have any form of carry laws on the books, uh, the National Right to Carry Reciprocity Act is not going to apply in the uh, state of Illinois. Would you like to see that change? Would you like to see your state become a, a concealed carry state? Oh, gosh, yeah. We, we have been pushing so hard for that. It is, uh, I, I tell people up here in D.C., in my state of Illinois is a laughing stock in a number of areas. But when it comes to concealed carry and gun rights, we're the last state standing without that. Uh, you know, that's an outrage. We made progress down in the state capitol last session. I hope we can next session. The problem is Illinois, as you know, is controlled by Chicago mm-hmm. and Chicago politicians. And they run, they run that state, and, and it really impacts negatively upon our Second Amendment rights in Illinois. Yeah, although, you know, i got to say, I, I'm even hopeful uh, seeing the results of a couple of town hall meetings in Chicago over the past couple of months where supporters uh, from there in Chicago, I mean, they, these weren't folks coming in from the suburbs. These are Chicago residents. They outnumbered the opponents of right to carry uh, by quite a large margin. So I, I'd like to think that uh, even in Chicago, the people, if not the uh, local politicians there, uh, are getting the right to carry works. Oh, absolutely. I, again, I think even you're right. Even in Chicago, if you if you polled this issue, or if people, if the man and the woman on the street could vote on this issue, we'd have concealed carry. I did a lot of work in the in in the inner city in Chicago, and there are parents in that city in certain neighborhoods that do want to defend their family. Absolutely. But the problem is special interests, you know, and 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 politicians, namely on the Democratic left. They've got a, they've got just got a lock and key on their voters that that we can't defeat right now. Yeah. No. Uh, well, I, I I think you're right. Uh, but I, I you know we like you said so close six votes away from a uh, veto proof supermajority in the uh, state house last year. Hopefully we can uh, get it done this year. Now that Illinois is the only state in the uh, union. And in the meantime, you know, again, I I I, I hope as you say that the uh, Senate. Uh, passes the National Right to Carry Reciprocity Act so folks in the uh, 49 other states can enjoy their right to carry. Well, you're right, and I'd love to see. Look, there are a lot of Democratic senators in some pretty tough states up for re-election next year. I would love to have to, I would love to see them have to vote on this issue. Um, I, I'm a states' rights guy. You're probably a states' rights guy. But I, I just get so ticked off when it, it seems like we, we hold – the Second Amendment hostage almost to a state-by-state argument. Mm. It's there in our federal constitution. Uh, We don't do the same thing with the First Amendment. Uh, So I think anything we can do at the federal level is helpful. Absolutely. Uh, And, and, you know, I know that there was this this argument, uh, even had people like uh, Mayor Bloomberg uh, coming out and talking about states' rights. But I'll tell you what, uh, I'm a big fan of federalism. I'm a big fan of the Tenth Amendment. But I'm a fan of individual rights, yes. even more than I am of uh, state rights or state powers. And we have the individual right to keep and bear arms. And it says right there in the Bill of Rights, it shall not be infringed. You know what? For some reason, it's only the Second Amendment that, that always has to make that argument. And I, you, and I know, you and I know that concealed carry works. We know that when Americans are able to defend themselves, crime goes down and Americans are protected. And so, But we always have to argue for our side based on the arguments and the statistics. Uh, I, it's good that we can do that, but it, it's right there in the Constitution. It's our basic inalienable, inalienable right that we shouldn't have to argue for. It's there. I could not agree with you more, Representative, but uh, as you say, unfortunately, we do still have to fight for it. Yep. I'm glad that uh, you're out there fighting for it today, and I appreciate you joining us on the program tonight, sir. Anytime. Have a great night. Congressman Joe Walls from Illinois joining us here on Cam & Company.